Hey Wargamers, Minigame Painter here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about 7th edition and don't mind if I have some whiskey along with it. Now there's many different videos of what is different about it. I only want to talk about the key points that I think might make the game uh, more smooth. Because first of all I think Game Workshop did a great job with the 7th edition. It opened up um, many things with the game. It used to be just one game um, with the point value and that was it. Then they introduced allies which was kind of shaky to begin with and then this version they allowed for many almost unlimited possibilities for gameplay as well as narration however you as the customer or hobbyist wants to do. So just moving forward it's not just I want to play a game let's play 2000 points now it's going to be like what type of game would you like to play and the points uh, and as a courtesy letting the person know if you're going to be bringing a one of these little mini titans or a flyer it's always been my local game shop usually the person tells you ahead of time how many flyers they're bringing that way you can bring flyers or kind of balance out the game but um I think this is great. I think the Game Workshop did a great job with this new booklet and this new packet. Uh, a couple of things just about the physical book is that they break it up into three different books. That way you're not lugging around a massive, massive brick everywhere you go. I will still probably get the mini book whenever that comes out in the new starter set, but I like having a relatively thin book of rules that, uh, that you can refer to. And um, also one of the most important things is most of the references are in the back of the book for easy. I've already played a couple of games and it's very easy how you can reference it. So I made a list of little things that I thought were good and bad about 7th edition and we're just going to jump right into it. So first of all let's start off with the bad. Alright first of all. Um, at first, my first, first initial thought was that the games were going to be longer because they introduced a new phase. There wasn't a lot of psychers to begin with. I mean, you can make a lot of psychers, but there wasn't a lot of psychers, so the psychic phase might not be as long or as bad as, uh, as you think. Uh, especially with my armies, orcs, um, pretty much no psychic phase. I'm building space marines, so it might be a little bit of a psychic phase. And then Tyranids, there's going to be a little bit. But, I'm sure the more you play, the faster it will go along. And in introducing the cards, it's more of an event versus just a quick game. So my battle reports might be slightly longer, so just be aware of that. Or I might modify them to fit within certain time constraint. So, first thing, bad things. Um, keep in mind that I'm a Space Marine, Orc, and Tyranid player. Um, I've played other armies before, but those are the primaries that I play right now. So, these might pertain to my armies. Um, number one, the smash attack is pretty much gone. A one-time attack, strength 10. Um, which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, their monstrous creatures are already pretty strong. And if you're going to put wings on them, you kind of have to keep them either a psychic attack or a shooting attack. So, Tyranids it didn't really hurt that much. Um, also the being able to land an assault or changing your flight path uh, beginning of the turn and then landing an assault. That's changed. That's a little bit of a bummer, but with my flying hive tyrants I never did it. It'll mainly affect demon princes, but I'm sure there's a way that you could maybe jump him in, up through cover or something. There, there's a way around that I'm sure. You might one thing I can definitely see coming, I haven't seen any issues with it, but if, let's say you want to go play against an opponent and he only brought an unbound list and that's just kind of crazy, you might have a little bit, you might have a little bit of pushback, but at the same time you as the player need to stand on what you want to play. So if you go in there thinking that you want to play a bound armies with a certain amount of points, then stick with it. 
Don't allow people to bring Escalation or other types of games. Like I said before, before these are different versions of the game, um, so that they can sell more models, you can expand your hobby, and let's say down the way where you got 5,000 points of orcs like me, you can buy a Stompa and just have fun every once in a while with a model, and it's not apocalyptic level where you have to have like four Stompas, because I don't think I'll ever get there. Um, the summoning of demon. As soon as I read that, I knew that was going to be a problem, and I'm sure you guys have seen that on the internet where people are summoning like multiple kinds of demons, and they may or may not have been doing it right, but just the fact that they're summoning hordes of demons just seems weird to me. So I would throw that into the another category of versions, whether you would have allow that or not. So I don't know if Game Workshop wanted to sell more demons and they just threw that in there I mean it makes I mean I guess it makes sense the warp with the demons coming out of the warp and you freak out and things spill out but um, I don't know there should be something a little different with that because the psychic powers with the perils isn't as scary as it was before because even if you get two sixes which is the only way to get it um, well in that you could get any doubles but my last battle report with my weird boy that wasn't really a problem because you know five and six on the um, perils chart is really not that big of a deal and um, probably one of the things that is frustrating right now not for me but for other players is that they removed all the psychic abilities out of all the codexes as of this point which is kind of a bummer if you have blood angels or space wolves which are coming but you're gonna have like a lull where you're gonna have a little bit of an issue for the next who knows they've been coming out with codex pretty quick so maybe the next four to six months before you might get your codex but uh, those are the bad things which is really not that many I think for the most part makes sense there are things that I don't like about the codex but it's mainly because I know that I'm gonna get hit by these things personally with your own armies So, I, I have to exclude those because I know they'll just hurt me later on in the game. So, moving on to the good stuff. The good stuff is that um, I think they fixed flamers. They used to be pretty cheesy. You guys all saw my four mega knobs in a truck. The truck gets blown up, they pile out, flame like one massive, major, huge group. There's Bolt there. I know. Love you too. Yeah. But I think they fix flamers. So you put down one, clear the space, put down another, clear the space, and I think that's good. Um, I don't think that nerfed flamers. A lot of people said that it nerfed flamers. I think they fixed it because I get that they fire simultaneously, but if you think about it, you had five flamers, they all merge into one flame and they hit people, not overlapping flame. Like, who cares if one flamer hits you versus another? You're still going to be SOL when that thing hits you anyways. And plus, the Overwatch is still pretty amazing. So, and uh, the thing that I don't like about this version, but I understand why they did, is the open top. Open top is pretty amazing. Um, flaming the individuals inside the open top, I might have to be a little more reserved with my trucks. Um, again, I don't like it, but it's not necessarily a bad thing considering the advantage of getting out and assaulting that turn. Obviously, everyone knows about the psychic phase. Um, still up in the air because I don't deal with a lot of psychic phase, so it could slow down the game. Um, people might get a little cheesy with their psychers, and, you know... I like the idea that a large psychic army just can't just make everything go off that turn. So let's say like a demon army, it's got 10 different kinds of things you can cast that turn. You might only be able to get off like 3 to 5 for sure. And people can deny it even if it's not targeting them. So I think that's a really solid move. It won't 
matter too much to me because I don't like psychic abilities because I don't want to remember all these things and the psychic ability cards that I got before are pretty much wiped out so that was a waste of money but I think this will be a good stop especially for like Eldar and demons and I can't believe people that play demons there's so many things to remember all the gifts and everything beforehand it's just it's amazing how much stuff there is so the psychic phase I, I, I like I'm not really a psychic person, but I like it in the fact that you have a uh, you don't get off all of them, and I think that's a huge advantage. Um, one thing I do like, which makes sense, is that the flying creatures you only have one grounding test. That's huge for me as a Tyranid player, but it makes sense because most of the shooting is supposed to be at simultaneously, so he'd be like swooping around, and if he does get hit, he'll he'll fall. And they, they fixed the marker light thing, which was just annoying. It was just ridiculous. Just like a like a laser pointer blinded him and he fell to the ground and he can't fly anymore. That's just stupid. Um one thing that uh, moving forward with like the cards first of all rolling 2d a six what, what was that that huge chart in the back probably the worst thing you could possibly do uh, I think the cards are mandatory this rolling and then remembering those is uh, absolutely insane so the cards for eight dollars a little expensive for cards but pretty much mandatory I love the fact of cards because you are bringing Tau and Eldar down to a level at which um, they're no longer the castle up, back away, run away, shooting type of army. They have to move forward, which is mo just absolutely astronomical. So Eldar went from like, Eldar and Tau went from A++ to the highest to like maybe an A- minus or a B+, plus because of specifically these cards, because you know, I've played a number of people that just sit in a castle and I've had the objectives most of the game and it doesn't matter until the end of the game. So if I, as my orcs or tyranids, have these objectives throughout the game, I'm going to be just completely destroying them. So yeah, okay, castle me and try to table me, but when, when it's like 9 to 2, um, you're never going to recover from that. So that was a huge move. It was a product that they got to sell, and it was just a mo it just huge increase in the ability to play. And the only problem I've seen with people is that, oh, it, it's even more randomness to the game. Well, guess what? It's a dice game. It's random, so get over it. Um, one thing that wasn't necessarily, I didn't really like, but it, it was a good move, is that they opened up the allies. Tyranids can now ally. Granted, they are really cautious about it, but at least they get to, you know, ally. As well as other armies, they clarified it, cleaned it up. I think they did a pretty good job overall. Um, the challenges, I wish they would have gotten rid of challenges because it's just completely stupid, especially for certain races like Tyranids or Orcs. They don't care about a challenge. They want to just kill the first thing they see. But... They at least made it to where the challenges can roll over. I think that's great because I don't know how many times where I had a huge mob of boys with a knob and a character went in there and go, oh, I challenge you. Killed my knob and the rest of the boys just sat there doing nothing. I just think that's, um, that's stupid. Both for the attacking player as well as the defending. The knob should be able to hit the player and then some as well as the character be able to hit the group as well so and vice versa if there's one marine in a character and he challenges it used to be that ch that challenging character was safe no matter how many times over I killed that one marine that was with him um, I just think that's stupid because they're gonna swarm that character no matter what uh, the next one is the vehicle table Besides the cards, what I would say is probably maybe number one. I think this is number two. The fact that there's a vehicle, they changed the vehicle table to be similar to the buildings where you cannot blow it up unless you have an AP2 or AP1 uh, weapon is massive.
that one little thing is going to be selling tons of models for Game Workshop. And I don't want to say it like that, but it gives a variety for us as players. So almost immediately, if you guys have been playing 7th edition, I guarantee you've been seeing Land Raiders. I've been, I guarantee you they've been seeing Predators in the backfield, more Vindicators. Hell, I mean, you're going to see a ton of stuff. Chaos probably even got a boost because their Mauler Fiend and Forge Fiend and um, Hellbrutes and what's the big giant spider one? Deffy. Anyways, you know who I'm talking about. Um, now him with four hole points, he's not going anywhere with his battle cannon. Now you can move him up and shoot and try and get in close combat versus just camping him in the corner and hoping the battle cam and does something for 200 points. I thought that was kind of stupid, but they brought him back big time. So, which is a great model. He's now probably even worth the 200 points. So all vehicles did very well. Granted, open top still makes it possible, but open top, now you need a six to go to a seven and blow up, which helps them too. Um, my last game, it seemed that trucks lasted a lot longer than they used to um, strictly because of the blow-up table. They have three hole points. That's pretty good for a light vehicle with 10 armor. Granted they can glance and all that stuff, but that's pretty solid. So moving on, um, they included more missions, including the cards. I think that's great. More ways, more variety to play the game, the better. I'm not set Everybody was kind of set in one game mode and it's like competition. No, this is a hobby. This is not played for competition. If you want competition, pick up like paintballing or baseball or something because this is a hobby. You agree with the opponent how you want to play it with the restrictions and then you move on. You'll see the tournament players come up with all the restrictions. They come up with a huge list that you print off before you even go there, which is fine. That's their tournament. They do whatever they want. And they may even open up new categories like Escalation, Unbound Tournament, you know, who knows, we'll see. I don't really go to tournaments, but, because I like casual play. The point values of victory points have gone up, so First Blood isn't the most important thing on the planet. It used to be, what was it, there was a couple different games like the Relic, um, what was the other one that had one objective in each? Uh, starting location it was worth three points and a lot of the times neither they each had their own and everything big guns. is it big guns never tire I don't know either way first blood isn't very a big deal it's one point it may be an ending thing at like nine to eight but for the most part you're not gonna have a one to zero game or a two to zero game or a three to two game kind of thing where that really matters so they almost eliminated First Blood, which I feel they should just completely get rid of now that they have more points, because it's whoever wins the dice roll, for the most part, if you're playing over 1500 points, uh, wins. Um, the things that I thought were kind of so-so that I have to play a little more in order to get them is jink, that you have to say you're jinking before they shoot at you. Now, if you have played any game of Game Workshop or uh, for Warhammer 40k is that the person says I'm shooting here to here roll they don't really give you that chance to even say jink and then and then what you know then it's like oh you're only jinking because I got five hits or whatever so I wish they would have maybe made it to where you see how many hits not wounds or whole points or pins or uh, glances or anything like that, maybe hits. Because that way, the person, while he's counting the dice, you can choose. Because if you think about it, alright, I'm in a plane. Or I'm in a bike. Or let's say a plane. And you're flying along and you see missiles shooting at you. Well, at that point, then you get to swerve. If you saw... That's that's what I was thinking before. If it, right now, how it is is that you see anti-aircraft gun turn and point at you. Now you're gonna be jinking. No, you're not gonna jink until the missiles are in the air, coming right at you. 
So um, that's going to be a tough one because you're going to have to, especially like an Eldar army, you're going to have to go as a you playing me and I'm Eldar, you're going to have to tell me and let me say it almost everything because they have bikes and planes and skimmers and all these things that have jink. So uh, it may slow down the game and plus that over enthusiasm to roll. Or you may come up with a house rule with your own jink. Figure it out. But I think that was kind of so-so. Um, a lot of people are probably going to hate me for this. I used to be a Chaos player. I've played the Helldrake. I see the value in the Helldrake. But I think they, they, they fixed it. Um, with the Flamer. It used to be they could torrent it in a 360 degrees. That means they could have a 24 inch range on both sides plus the 8, so they could throw 32 inches on each side of their flamer. It's ridiculous. And as soon as that came out, I was like, that is ridiculous. And a couple games ago, I didn't, I forgot about it, and they threw it backwards and hit my flamer. Even with that, it's a, what is it, a strength 7 AP 3? It's still amazing. It does vector strike and as a flamer, AP3, it's still remarkable. You may not see the three Helldrakes anymore, you might see one or two, but it's still an amazing model and it's worth every penny. People might go, oh, it's nerfed. It's only nerfed because it was a horribly, it was just poorly executed model. Whoever thought that up didn't think very far and I think that's terrible. Um, so it's fixed. Keep in mind most It's still probably one of the except for like the Imperial Guard flyer It's still probably the best flyer out there by far because that AP3 flamer Marines that are what 20 something points a piece after you kill them out They're just toast. No, no cover save. No nothing only invulnerables that you get that so and then any toughness 3 instant death on with no cover AP3, which usually goes through their armor, it's 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 still amazing. So, those are my main things that I wanted to touch on. I'm sure I missed them, most of them, but those are my good thoughts. Overall, I think 7th edition is fantastic. Orcs around the corner, I think orcs, orcs are going to be, I think, honestly, I think they're going to be either two, three, or four in the strongest codexes out there. It's one of the landmark races next to the Marines. Um, and some of their items that, like their flash kits are amazing that are coming out and they look fantastic. I can't wait to get them. Um, the Morkonaut and Gorkonaut, I'm still kind of debating on them. It seems like a lot of points considering. Orcs are really cheap. For 200 and, let's say 250 average, you can do a lot with 250 points. Probably more 250 points to take out a Gorkonaut than it's necessary. Um, so that may not, I don't know, I may eventually get the model. Most likely because I just love collecting orcs. But between the price and how many points is involved, and I'm not quite sure if it's a heavy support or a super heavy, they didn't really explain that too well. In the thing so maybe you guys can clarify that down below but um, I'm really excited for that and then they have these new artilleries that I think are an add-on to the cannons that are coming out they look so awesome looks like orcs are gonna be more shooty and assault they're gonna have a huge range of things and I'm extremely excited so that's so that's orcs now we're gonna go on to my Tyranids which a lot of you seem to enjoy. A um, couple things I'm yes and no about is flying creatures. Now you're debating. Should you have them flying? Should you not have them flying? If they're on the ground. Should you, like a, let's say a hive tyrant. Obviously the twin link devours. More likely you're going to still have him flying around. Or will you have him walking around with some hive, uh, not hive guard, the uh, tyrant guards around him. Is that worth it? Well, there's a lot of sky firing now. I'll have to 
play with that and see how that goes. I mean, I do have Tyrant Guard, but they're unpainted. They're not even on the base, and they're missing, like, an arm because of how we paint it. So that might be a little bit before I experiment with that. Unless you guys are perfectly fine with unpainted models, let me know, and then I'll figure it out and make it work. Uh, Shadows of the Warp. It still affects leadership, but doesn't affect psychers anymore. So I looked in the FAQ and they don't really have anything about that. I hope they fix that because Shadow the Warp, especially with the new psychic phase, could be massive. So if they're within 12 inches, oh my god, if it's within 12 inches and it reduces one of the successful rolls or something, that would be huge and Tyranids would have a massive boost and they wouldn't be like one of the worst codexes ever. They'd be kind of in the middle ballpark just on that with the new psychic phase. Especially with everybody being so excited in uh, the psychic phase. Um, now, because there's the less kill points in the games and the reduction of first blood and the whole psychic phase and additional ro dice rolls for the psychic phase per psyker and I mean name it there might be a benefit to having Turvagons come back we'll have to see how we play it out because they still kill Termagons so if you spawn them and get them out of the way or whatever like that so and then obviously the in the uh, obvious Oh, okay, so, um, and the lack of, I mean, there's troop benefits, too. So, the more troops you have, I think it's better, especially if you're bound, and you're a troop, that you can take over things. Turvangan might actually have a slight comeback. Mainly because if you guys spawn out and just get the hell away from the Turvagon, I think that's going to be the most beneficial thing. Um... So that might be good. Now with the no smash, now I can see why they did the claws. The claws that give you plus one strength. Um, now I can see why, because I, before it used to be plus D3 attacks and if you smashed, it was after the fact, it was amazing, it was amazing. And then now they reduce smash to one die. Now I can see why they would want claws because it does give you that added strength. The points don't really match up, but I can see the benefit there. I don't know offhand, but I want to say plus one gives you in the six to seven strength range, where now you can start insta-killing uh, Imperial Guard as well as some people. Those are the things I see on the Tyranids. Um, like the Zoanthorps, they're now mastery level two. Now I understand why they did that. Um, the only thing is, is to shoot their brotherhood, the only purpose they're there is to shoot their lance weapon, and it might be harder to do so, and people might put almost all their dice into getting rid of that power. Because that's probably the strongest power the Tyranids have, is that lance weapon, strength 10, I think it's AB1 or AB2, uh, lance, that now is going to make a difference more than ever because vehicles can be exploded on 7, it's AP1 or AP2 um, land. So now that land raider comes up, armor 12, now you're plus 2, it's going to be a big deal. So that might be the, the harder parts. Zoanthorps, still freaking amazing, or not Zoanthorps, um, Venoms are still amazing. Pretty much an auto-include, which might make gameplay a little not that much um, variety but um, you you do what you got to do when you have a, a pseudo codex so anyway so if you guys enjoy these kinds of videos please let me know like it below leave a comment let's keep a discussion going I'd also love to start a kind of like a talking with minigame painter or if you guys have questions to so let me know below that could be about 7th edition, it could be about various armies, 
Um, I just like to open up discussion and you know kind of get some feedback and it could be about it could be about me it could be about other random things that aren't uh, mini war gaming or uh, mini game painting or mini miniatures to begin with um, but I want to keep it open so I'd like to do maybe once every two weeks or once a week to where I answer your questions so you guys can get to know me better and I get to be more involved in the community Sorry I was gone for about a week, a week and a half. We went fishing for my dad's birthday like we do every year since I was like five. So literally I was in an area that had no cell phone service and it was amazing. I even caught kind of a little bit of tan, um, fishing and having some beer by the lake. So thank you for watching. I appreciate all my followers, all my subscribers. Um, you know, just you guys are amazing. Anything else I could, you know, do for you guys. Um, the only thing that would be kind of difficult right now is that we've had a lot of requests for painting tutorials. I don't really have the camera set up or the lighting in order to make it really effective because it's a shaded area with, and then painting tutorials is kind of a bad thing. But anything else you guys want, let me know. Um, or hell, if you guys email me at minigamepainter at gmail.com, maybe with some like terrain or some models, or if you guys had a question about something of how somebody did something, I can maybe research it and figure it out for you, uh, or at least spark your interest in figuring out how to do it. So, anyways, Minigame Painter here. Thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.